When you go to airports, you see that airplanes are continuously landing and taking off. Based on today's statistics, more than 10 million passengers get on 104,000 different airplanes and go around the world. So this shows us that airplanes are extremely important for us to get from point A to point B in the world. Just like we said, more than 104,000 airplanes. Where do they come from? The biggest airplane manufacturer is Boeing. We want to go back in time to see what a company like Boeing came from and how it came to be. We have to go back to the early 20th century, the year 1900. This is when people didn't even have a car, let alone an aircraft. At this time, when someone wanted to go somewhere, they wouldn't even go farther than 50 miles. If they wanted to go farther, it was counted as a voyage and surviving was very difficult. You probably know, but in the year 1903, the Wright brothers made the first airplane and tested it and it was successful. The Wright brothers started a revolution in the aircraft department because anybody that knew engineering tried to get in this business and design their own airplane. And in our video about Lockheed Martin, they have the same story. They got into aircrafts because it was such thing so new and they were fascinated by engineering. And one of the people that was interested in aircraft at this time was a man named William Edward Boeing. Boeing came from a rich family. His parents had a lot of land and when they passed away, all of that went to William. But don't think that Boeing was a stuck up rich kid and didn't know what to do. He knew how to use this money for the better. So he was raised in a household that taught him how to live, not to leech off his parents. All the money that William got from his parents, he invested in different types of industry. And one of the most famous ones was a ship making business. When you get to 1914, this is when Boeing sees an airplane for the very first time. He falls in love with it so much that he asks the owner if we can go for a test ride. And the owner accepts. When William Boeing got on this airplane, he immediately fell in love. And he told himself, he has to buy an aircraft for himself. When he asked around where he should buy an aircraft, someone told him to go speak with a person named Glendale Martin. If you've seen our video about Lockheed Martin, Glendale Martin was the founder of Martin Company. Glenn Martin makes his new aircraft and hands it to Boeing in the year 1916. Boeing had a friend by the name of George Westervelt, and just like William, he was in love with the airplanes as well. When he realized that Boeing has bought a plane, he asked him we should modify it to make it a little bit better. When William asked him what we should do to the aircraft, he suggested to add two tiny wings underneath to make the aircraft more stable so it doesn't shake while you're flying. They actually did this and it smoothed out the right by a lot. William loved aircraft so much and the engineering of it, he immediately started an aero company. The name was Pacific Aero Products Company and the airplane that they modified together, they named it Blue Bill. Boeing was so fascinated with aircrafts that he let go of everything he was doing and focused 100% of his attention to airplanes. And in his brand new company, he hires 13 new employees. Westervelt, the guy that gave the idea to Boeing to modify the aircraft, was forced to go to war because World War I has been going on and the US has a draft now. And after Westervelt left, the name of the company was changed to Boeing, William's last name. The first aircraft Boeing designed was called the Boeing Model C and it could land on water and on land. The US Navy liked this aircraft a lot and that is why they ordered 50 of these. Boeing was very happy that the US government is actually paying attention to his product. We continue and the war is now over and when the war is over, the market for aircrafts takes a dump and nobody is trying to buy unless it's extremely cheap. 
Boeing realizes that he has more than 100 employees by now, and if he wants to fire them all, it's going to be hard to rehire new people later on. And that is why he turned the airplane factory into a furniture building factory. And the same employees built furniture instead of aircrafts. He was able to keep his employees and only lose $700 per week, which is not bad for a company like this. Three years later, Boeing gets back into the aircraft business and designs a new aircraft named the MB3A, and it had a price of $7,000. This airplane was so properly made that the US government falls in love with it, and they order 200 of them. What was this aircraft anyways? After World War I was over, William Boeing had his hands on a Fokker D7, a German plane, and basically influenced this aircraft into a more modern and better version. He didn't copy it, but it really influenced the design of it. Another great idea William has is that he designs an aircraft just for airmail, and this was a huge success immediately, because if you wanted to send a package across the country back in the day, it would take months. With the help of aircrafts, they were able to get people's package across the country in less than a day. <clears throat> Boeing wasn't designing their own engine, and they would order it from a company called Pratt & Whitney. And in the year 1928, Boeing has grown so much that they were able to buy out Pratt & Whitney and make it their own company. So now they're building their own engines as well. By doing this, he makes himself a monopoly in the aircraft business. Another idea popped into William Boeing's head and he wanted to create an aircraft for passengers. And that is why in the year 1930, he designed the Model 80 that would fit 12 people in it. When we get to 1934, this is when the US government starts giving trouble to William Boeing and they accuse him of monopoly. And that is why he was forced to divide the company and pay a huge fine. William Boeing was forced to divide it. Boeing became a company that only designs and builds aircrafts. The company United Airlines took over the passenger department and the engine building part turned into United Aircraft Corporation. And these three companies had to be separated and ran by different people and they couldn't be connected whatsoever. William was so upset what they did to his company that he sold the company Boeing and left and started racing horses and breeding horses. And until the end of his life, he didn't care about aircrafts anymore. After William sold his company, the company Boeing was now a corporation. And that means there was no face behind the company anymore. The company continues to work until we get to the year 1940. World War II has begun in Europe and it's tearing everything apart and the Americans are watching. But the US government asked Boeing to design one of the best bombers you can because we will need it. And the company builds the B-17 and at this time it's the biggest bomber in the world. Boeing was very lucky because the US enters the war and keeps pressuring Boeing to build more bombers. They produced 12,000 B-17s and each of them cost $240,000. At this time, Boeing is busy building other aircrafts as well, like the Boeing 307, which was a passenger aircraft and it was very well made. Boeing grew so much in World War II that they had more than 80,000 employees. Anybody that asked for a job, they got it. In the year 1944, Boeing makes an iconic bomber, the B-29, the aircraft that delivered both of the atomic bombs to Japan. In another way, the B-29 is very famous because it's the only aircraft that has delivered the atomic bomb to actually explode it. The most amount of death by one bomb is by the B-29 as well, over Hiroshima. When World War II ends, Boeing once again 
hits a wall and starts going downhill and they are forced to lay off 69,000 employees. And then Stalin comes around and makes American weapon manufacturers happy. Because in the year 1949, the Soviets tested their first atomic bomb and then a year later, they attacked Korea. And that means the Cold War took a new turn. When Korea was being taken over by the communists, the Americans were forced to enter. And because of this, not only did Boeing, but most weapon manufacturers in America grow exponentially. Like the giant B-47 bomber. Bigger than that and more famous, the B-52 bomber. It has been more than 70 years and the B-52 is still being used to this day. After all this, the Soviets start another race with the Americans. The space race, because they were the first ones to send a satellite to space called the Sputnik. And the Americans realized that they're being left behind in some part of the world. A few years later, the Russians sent Yuri Gagarin, the, the first person to space. That is why the Americans were forced to announce that we're not only going to space, but we're gonna go to the moon. After all this started, the government started NASA and NASA started working with Boeing and they ordered rockets from Boeing because they had experience in building missiles. In the 1950s, Boeing started to think about coming back to the passenger airline business. At first, they took the B-47 bomber and turned it into a passenger aircraft and an airplane that's very successful throughout history is built, the Boeing 707. This airplane was so well built that it's used to this day, 70 years later. In the year 1968, Boeing built an aircraft that's considered the Toyota Corolla of airplanes because it's the most sold airplane in the world, the Boeing 737, and more than 12,000 of them have been sold around the world. They still built this aircraft and there's new variations of it, like the 737 MAX. The MAX had an issue, but they resolved it, and we've made a video on it. Two years later, in the year 1960, the most famous airplane in the world is made, the 747, the biggest passenger aircraft at that time. We get to the year 1970, when all the Europeans put their money together and create an aircraft company so they could rival Boeing, Airbus. The main investors were the UK, Germany, and France. At that time, they were trying to design an aircraft that was supersonic. And if you would like to know more about the Concorde, watch this video. At this time, Boeing had no idea if they wanted to build a supersonic passenger aircraft or not. But they were watching Airbus very closely to see how the Concorde turns out. Unfortunately, the Concorde is not successful, but Boeing continues to grow. In the 90s, they released the 777 or the 777, and this is a very successful aircraft. The newest aircraft is basically the 737 MAX, but it's still based on the grandfather one, and you can't really call it an all-new aircraft. The newest aircraft is the 787, which came out in 2009. The 787 is a much bigger aircraft and it's supposed to replace the 747. Boeing doesn't have time for anything because they make passenger aircraft, they work with the Pentagon, they build missiles, they build rockets for NASA, and they've even worked with SpaceX in the past, but recently they have become competitors. Right now Boeing has a value of more than $125 billion and it's the biggest aircraft manufacturer in the world and each share costs about $208.